it's day three of Tactics Week on the channel. And today we are looking at one of the most probably requested videos that I've had in recent months. We're going to try and take on Fernando Denise's Fluminense, the Copa Libertadores champions. I'm going to use their starting 11 from the Copa Libertadores final and try and put in what's called relationism into FM24. If you're a little bit unsure about relationism, it's basically the anti-pep. We're not looking at nice, pretty patterns in zones. Well, there is patterns, but patterns done on given goes, one-twos, things such as tilting that we'll talk about, and in particular one that we can kind of get in the game pretty well. It's called staircasing, and we're going to try and get that into FM24. All right, this is a unique tactic. If you want a bit more knowledge on relationism, I'm going to leave two links down in the description, one video, one blog, go check them out. That has very much helped me with my research over the past few months. All right, let's get into it. Fluminense, Denise's relationism chaos. Let's go. Right, so this tactic is, as always, available for my Patreons. Link down in the description if you want to support the channel. That would be absolutely brilliant. You get the access to this tactic as a direct download and all the tactics from FM24, even FM23. They're all in there for you to download. There is weekly tactic videos for the rest of FM24. Check out the link in the description. So, to help us understand a little bit what how a relationism looks, on the football pitch. We're just going to look at some average positions. Now, if you think positional play, Pep Guardiola, you look at average positions that look like this, where everything is equally spread out with loads of options to form triangles, etc. You know, Manchester City's pass map will often look something very similar to this. If we check out Fluminense's from the Copa Libertadores final, it looks like this. So as you can see, a whole host of players bunched in the middle. And that's because what we're trying to recreate is there's very much similar things in terms of positional play and what relationism is, in particular what Fernando Denise is wanting to do. We want to create a possession-based side. We want to control games with possession, quick, short passes, and a press, a counter-press after the play has gone. We build out from the back as well. So there's the links, but the combinations and the movements and the passing, the core kind of philosophy and the structure, very much different, in particular when you get into this middle third. So with this heat map, as you can see, there is a staircase. So a diagonal row of at least three players. And that's what we're going to try and create a little bit in the game. As you can see, super narrow. That doesn't mean that they're necessarily focused in the middle all the time because of tilting. Tilting is basically where the whole team will shift to one side of the pitch. They do that on both sides. So if you do that on the both sides, you will end up with a heat path that is in the middle. They will do it through the middle as well. And that has proven in FM to be the most easiest way of getting the little give and goes, the one twos, something called a tabella, which is sort of like, which is classed as a give and go. So remember, there's a difference between a give and go and a one two. One two is obviously a one, a pass in, a one touch pass and go. And then with a give and go, it doesn't necessarily have to be a one two. And that's once again been found a little bit easier to recreate in the game. All right, let's get into it. So. I will go through a few variations and things that you might tweak. As you can see down the side, there's a whole host of team instructions. Not normally what I like, but it's just trying to get the match engine to get it all to work together. And I'll, I'll explain the reasons for that in a minute. Right, goalkeeper. This is, as I said, the starting 11 from the Copa Libertadores final. Goalkeeper, sweeper, keeper on support. Moving to the fullbacks. Now, these are the ones that I'm not too keen, keen on using. And we've done it for a particular reason. If I was doing it, I would probably have them both as complete wingbacks. However, what we're trying to do is create that narrow shape. If we have complete wing-backs on, even with sit narrower, they stay really wide. Now, when Marcelo comes into here, he's not doing his Inchenko. He's not doing what other teams have been doing, like a, a Trent Alexander-Arnold, how you would expect you know, teams to come in and, and build up. We're not after that positional play. I basically want them just to come in here and express themselves and get involved in the little give and go. So that's why we've done it. And, and just to help us narrow the team up as much as possible. Two ball-playing defenders. Now, these stay quite rigid. While all the other players are very fluent, very flexible, very expressive in terms of where they go and what they can do, these two are a little bit of a mainstays. We don't often see them traveling beyond players occasionally Andre will drop in and do a little bit of a swap but generally them two Nino and Filippo Mello who's been playing there recently most of the time are pretty structured and keep a nice base into the middle of midfield we've got the register in Andre destined for the Premier League Man United for fuck's sake get this boy signed he won't get signed 
he'll probably go somewhere else and then you'll end up spending about 100 million this is potentially a 100 million pound player i've got him as a register with the playing instruction dribble more because we want to encourage the expression or if he's got the opportunity to go jink for a few players we want him to try and jink for a few players he's actually scored a really good goal he carried the ball about 40 yards before smashing it in in a couple of games that we've been doing during testing into midfield i've just gone i did have this as a double pivot alongside uh andre but i've just changed it just to allow once again a little bit of room for these two inverted wing backs to come in so i've just put him as central midfield on support very much a link player get once again involved in these given goals pretty decent as well without the ball now this is a little bit of a lopsided you would think of 4-2-3-1 but once again I've just tried to get the game to be condensed. There's an, even an argument that you could change the inverted winger. Keno's an inverted winger. He loves to drift and he loves to drive. But to get a little bit more of the overall give and goes and the structure and the passing network that you want, might want to see, the pass maps, it might be an idea to put him on AP. An advanced playmaker with the instruction of sit narrow. So once again, it all condenses in. Because, because everyone is quite condensed in there, he does stay out a little bit wide. It does happen at times. They often try and keep him out wide when they tilt into one side, maybe the right side. They often try and just leave that left winger out there just as a potential hit. A lot of the time, they will shape to go out that way and then actually turn back and go into the crowd. So it's out there as a little bit of a... A thing to maybe to keep the other defenders and maybe to create an overload on the on the side that they've got the ball because obviously they'll want to make sure maybe a defender, a right fullback is staying outside and looking at Keno. All right, so inverted winger, sit narrower just so we can get him a little bit closer to the play. And then moving on to the number 10, it's Ganzo. We've gone for an engaunch. It could be a Trek with Tista, but basically because I just wanted him to stand. I wanted him to be the link player. I wanted to see him doing those little give and goes. There's maybe potential one twos. So I thought the perfect thing for that was the Engaunch. Sitting in there, bit of a high pivot in the team. Arias, very much similar in terms of Keno, that he likes to drive, he likes to run. Any other tactic, he would be, you know, he would be on the right side in a 4-2-3-1, inverted winger, etc. But just once again, to create a little bit of an overload in the middle so we can get those ones and twos, then ones and twos, sorry, those one twos in. I've put him as a shadow striker and also we can then get his run. And I thought, you know, if balls are coming in and linking with it, with, with Ganzo the Engaunch, I thought maybe a third man run from him would be pretty useful. So that's why we've got him as a shadow striker. And then Cano up front. I'm a little bit disappointed that he's that old, <laughs> to be honest. Because I thought, this dude is maybe linked... This may dude maybe would work in a top European side. You know these sides that I just want a goal scorer like Real Madrid? If this dude played number nine for Real Madrid, he would score an absolute shit ton. He's a tremendous finisher, really good all-rounder, 16 finishing in the game, good mentals, off the ball, leadership, plays with his back to goal. So once again, he'll come into these areas, he will link, and then he often spins off. So I thought a nice little, so a nice little mix between the two, I find, is a deep line forward. All right. Those are the player instructions. Into the team instructions, positive mentality. Now, as you can see, there is a lot going on. I'll explain why. Narrow attacking width, because we want that player condensed so we can do them shorter passes, so we can get those one-twos, those tabellas, those tilting, those staircasing, all those things that Denise likes to have his side doing on a regular basis. Into the approach play, play out of defence with those two ball-playing defenders. Focus through the middle. I think if we don't have that on, they come. They end up being too wide apart. So focus that play through the middle. That will naturally suck our, hopefully our wider players, our inverted wingers, uh, our inverted wing backs, sorry, and the wide players just to come in a little bit more. And then I've gone for underlap and underlap, under, underlap left and underlap right, just so I thought it will help those third man runs that we're trying to recreate a little bit. And also it will stop balls then going outside. If we're trying to force... If we're trying to play with underlaps on, I'm just hoping that those runs are then a little bit narrower into the penalty area. Crosses I've left off, but you could more than likely put... I One of the games, we were just crossing for no reason against a team in a low block. So I did have that one, and I did change it mid-game. Run at defence, because we want our players, you know, we're looking at these Brazilian... This is very much a Brazilian style. It's style based off small-sided games in the street where boys, girls, where they're allowed to express themselves in really small, tight areas and dribbles, dribbled through presses, those little one-twos, give and goes. We want to have that on, so run at defence. Be more expressive, obviously. And then passing directness, much shorter passing so we can get those small, intricate players in as much as possible. The bigger the passing directness, I imagine more open we're going to be. And we want also them possession numbers to be extremely high. 
I had slightly higher to start with, then I went up to higher, and then I've moved it back down. When you're playing against teams that you expect to batter, get it up to higher. And then we played Vasco de Gama in the state championship, and we just struggled for possession for the first 60 minutes and knocked it down one, and it just helped us generate a little bit more possession in the game. Into transitions, counter-press and counter. We're in a perfect opportunity to counter-press. Imagine, because everything's condensed together in here. We'll often lose balls in here, but we might have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players, the full-backs, the midfielders, all in and around the ball. So we're in a perfect opportunity to counter-press. Counter-attack as well. Can we hit the wide player? Can we hit Cano as well in behind occasionally? Distribute the ball to the centre-halves, just so once again that funnels us in to start progressing through the middle of the pitch. If we do it to full-backs, I think then that's going to allow us to go around the sides a little bit more and clip balls into channels, which we don't want. Out of possession, high press, much higher line, much more trigger press as well, because it wants to be chaotic as possible. Prevent short distribution, so we're going to have a nice high line, set the team really high, and that is it. All right, that is the tactic. That's what I put together. You know, there is other versions out there that you could more, in, you know... Samuel at times is often in a heat map, he's often out this side, so you could maybe bring everyone in a little bit, if you're going to bring Keno in as an advanced playmaker, you might even then put Samuel as a fullback on support, but I just find he was just, he was out wide a lot, and we were using him a lot, it was making it a little bit unrealistic, so that's why I got inverted wing back, but if you look at his heat maps, he's often quite wide, but the amount of touches on the ball are not as high as the others because they focus the player generally in those little patterns going through the centre of the pitch. Right, we're just going to show you a few little highlights of what we could see in the game. So as you can see, there's a little bit of staircase form in there. Look, can you see? We've got one there. We've got one there. And it's the one, the one thing that we can get in the game. As you can see, we're super narrow. Now, if FM was just a little bit more flexible and you could encourage one-twos, I'd like to see us working through here because we've got the players in the right areas to do it, but the game just chooses sometimes not to do it. But we do score some nice goals. You know, there's our staircasing, one to the other. Patient in possession. Marcelo's come in. We have got the fullback coming in nice and narrow. Can you see? Shadow striker, but he's still quite wide on that right-hand side. And then we get our give and go. I think Keno actually makes the assist, and he links really well. So he's in, and then he's off. And that is a give and go. And we're in, ball across, little bit of luck falling to Arias at that back post. But there is, you know, the staircase, the give and go, things that we should expect to see from a Denise tactic. And then once again, we finally get Cano as that kind of pivot. He does a lovely one-touch pass. Arias, where is he? He's there. Ganzo's there. I think Arias is, is, is the goal scorer in the end. But as we say, we work through the pitches. Now that, pit, that pass is a little bit too big from Picky. It would generally be pass, pass, pass. But the Ganzo pass is absolutely tremendous. Just watch this. Bosh. In there, a little give and go. He does go for the give and go, but we end up finding Arias free in the middle. We don't get that often. They like to take a couple of touches, but at times, players in that end goal control just act as that, what I like to call a high pivot. And then in a game against Boa Vista, in the, you know, they are a very good side, but as you can see, we've kind of got that little cluster of players. It's still a little bit open what I would want, but there's a couple of staircases in there and we have got a really good highlight to show you of staircasing. Look at that line there. One, two, three, four, five. Absolutely wonderful. And it's going to end up being this little pattern here that we get the goal from. So it'll work its way back across. So we're in there. Andre into Martinelli, into Ganzo. Into Keno. Into Cano in the middle. Absolute tremendous pass, 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 pass on that little diagonal line. Thanks for watching. Tomorrow is all about Bielsa Ball and how he's going to get his Uruguay side going in the next Copa American. Hopefully, see him into the next World Cup. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you later.